good great gang we're here today we're doing a little bit of a different video okay we're doing some cold hard science okay so the basis of the video is what kind of arrow and broadhead penetrates the most the main thing i'm really going for is arrow weight i have this arrow here which i was using back in deer season it's around 399 grains so basically a 400 grain arrow it's a micro diameter should go really fast these are really popular nowadays the arrow i switched to very recently is one like this it's actually 500 50 grains and it's very very heavy. it's a heavy arrow a lot of people are starting to switch to heavier arrows nowadays but here's the problem guys i switched to a heavier arrow because i heard heavier arrows penetrate better and that a heavy arrow can go through stuff that a lighter arrow just couldn't well a little bit ago i actually went to florida got a couple shots on some hogs and i was using this arrow right here here's the clip right here but i actually hit the hog up a little bit higher right through the shield and the shoulder blade and the arrow went in about about that much right there and then it just kind of stopped and, well we never found the pit and yeah that that's pretty much it and i was kind of disappointed in my arrows i thought it would at least go in a little bit deeper with it being so heavy and everything i mean whenever i'm shooting this heavier arrow i'm sacrificing a lot of speed and i'm expecting to get something out of that and down there at florida i don't know i just didn't get anything out of it now before i show you the other arrows we'll show you what we're going to be testing in me and ethan has actually created our very own ballistics gel so we're going to be using this to test we got a couple t-shirts to simulate like the leather or the skin of an animal but now we know with your plan a with any arrow pretty much if you go right behind the shoulder in between a rib straight through flesh lungs heart and out the other side without hitting a bone any arrow like literally like any arrow is probably going to kill just about anything but we're not looking at that we're looking at plan b what if maybe your shot gets unlucky and hits two ribs or maybe it's a little bit to the front and maybe goes through the shoulder blade that's what i want to know what happens best is it a heavy arrow or light arrow that still does better after it hits a bone now this isn't a real bone but it's a really hard piece of a dog house and uh honestly i think it's harder than a lot of shoulder blades so that'll be really cool to test whenever we test this we're going to have a shirt for skin we're going to have this plastic for some bone and we're going to have this to see how far each of them actually goes through since this is a science type video we're going through a lot of the specs but just so you know i'm shooting a 28 and a half inch draw length at 60 pounds also since both of these arrows are different weights i can tell you that they are both actually tuned in right to where they are perfectly tuning so they're flying straight both of them with the tips that they have this one has a 100 grain tip this one has a 150 grain tip with an extra 100 grain insert so it's 250 grains right up front that's pretty big but yeah that's what we're going to test and then if the gel survives we have this one right here which is a three blade we're going to see how this one does compared to the two blade on penetration and then here we have an expandable blade now this is like last case scenario if the gel somehow survives we'll try this one i honestly don't know i don't plan on using expandables probably ever because there's just too many moving parts and i feel like they might break yeah i mean there's just a lot of moving parts and if you do go plan b and accidentally hit the wrong thing one of the blades could break off I'm not saying they will. I'm just saying that they could. But okay, okay. Let's stop talking and let's build the simulation. Guys, we're starting off. We have a GoPro up there so we can get a good action. Just to let you know, on the light arrow and the heavy arrow, the broadheads are pretty much the same. They're the same brand, should be same sharpness, same diameter, same length, everything. This one does have some serrations. I don't think that should be a big deal. It shouldn't do much, but everything else of the broadhead are exactly the same. So here we are. We're gonna shoot the first one right into the gel. Hey, Daryl, we're trying to make a video. Can you speak quiet for a minute? All right, here we go. That went straight through. We may have problems. Okay, let's see what happens. The arrow's over there somewhere. I know that. Um, as for the shirt, straight through it all the way. Didn't have a problem, which I didn't think it was. I mean, it's a Disney shirt. I hope it could go through it. There's one piece of it. Here's the other piece of the bone simulation. You can see whatever it hit right there. Anyways, the arrow in right here and uh, outed uh, right here. So pretty much pretty straight all the way through. The arrow came over here somewhere. Ethan, I, I think I think we have a a pretty <laughs> daryl stop talking anyways i think we have a small problem i don't think our gel is um uh, very very good at all so it's not thick enough i'm There's actually arrow. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, as for the broadhead, um, it doesn't look like anything happened to it at all, really. What we're gonna do, since I expected it, and in real life, I believe that an arrow like this would not go all the way through that much ballistics gel. I'm actually just gonna buy some online. It's not too expensive, but that way we'll actually have a really good test. So, we'll catch y'all back in a week or something whenever it actually comes in. We will get another broadhead out of the pack. That way it has its original sharpness. And we'll catch y'all back whenever that happens. See you in about a week or two. Um, uh, we... Now we gotta, Ethan, we gotta, we gotta take all this down. See you in a week. Give us a target that is brown why did i pick brown i don't know i figured you'd at least have like an orange can back there i thought it was black all righty guys we are uh we're ready big thanks to clear ballistics i called them up i was like hey can i can you can you give me some ballistics gel and they said yeah. So here we go, baby. 16 inches thick, six inches tall, six inches wide. Overall, me and Ethan's thoughts, okay, we tried to create our own. It was not clear, and it also was not tough. This stuff, like, I tried the thumb and the eye. Thumb and the eye. It didn't go through. That's just like doing this right here. It's not gonna go through. It's actually the same as like flesh or whatever. It's some thick stuff. And even better than that, once we get done, we can melt it down and make a brand new block. That's gonna be epic. But first things first, we're gonna continue the experiment. We have upgraded our armor. Instead of going with that piece of plastic, I decided to go, let's go with some of this thin plywood. Now, this is really tough and probably more tough than any bones we're gonna run into, maybe. But you know what? We're not testing which one can kill an animal the best after it goes through this. We're simply testing which arrow has the most penetration after it goes through something really hard, which is plan B. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Let's try it out with the light arrow first. What's your predictions? Do you think it's going through? I he think, thinks it's going through. I think it's going to end up somewhere over there in the dirt. Let me remind you, we're actually using real ballistics gel this time. KG, you, you literally clean pass through a hog. Not 16 inches of a hog though. I think it's definitely going to stop. I hope it stops because the last broadhead went over there and buried itself into some gravels and bent, de beat up pretty bad. So we got a brand new tip. Don't worry, it's not the one that's already been shot. Here we go. We're about five yards right now, but that's not necessarily what we're testing. Here we go. I told you, dude. I'm telling you, dude, it ain't gonna go through. We just done the light arrow. I don't think we got very much penetration at all. Like, okay, that's actually really good penetration. But hold on, let's talk about this accuracy first. No kid. You telling me accuracy? Where was it at in Florida? I don't know. I don't know where the accuracy was at. I had the accuracy during practice. I went after I went hunting. I don't know. It just, it just wasn't there. But checking into it, we got some serious, serious penetration in here. Not only did it go through the hide, which is simulated by a Disney shirt, went clean through this, and then has stuck itself in. We didn't bring a ruler, but about yay in there. The end of the arrow's right there. That's a good probably eight inches. That's a that's a solid eight inches. That's more penetration than I got on my pig. But there's a chance on my pig it had to go through both the hog's shield, which is like like a bone that they that the males create on their shoulders. But it also went through the shoulder blade. So let's just forget what we've seen here. Let's stop making judgments or anything. Let's go get the heavy arrow, put it in here side by side. We are about to figure out literally plan B after it hits something hard. Is it light arrow, light and fast, slow and heavy? What do you think? Comment below, what do you think? No exceptions, don't, don't, I don't care what you're thinking right now, don't go on Google. I don't know what's gonna happen, I've never seen anything like this. Comment below right now, light arrow or heavy arrow, which one's penetrating most? Plan B, after it hits something hard. This one that we're gonna be using, it's a little bit different, it has a little bit of serrations, but I don't think it's gonna make that big of a difference. I just don't think it's going to. But uh, we know that with bullets, actual bullets, the faster bullets penetrate more until they hit something hard, then the heavier, slower bullets actually transfer more energy. But with arrows, energy really doesn't matter because it's really all about cutting. So whichever one penetrates the most is whichever one cuts the most, whichever one cuts the most kills the most. Pretty simple. 
I think. I'm hoping that the lighter arrow penetrates more because whenever you go to a heavy arrow, you're sacrificing a lot of speed and accuracy because it drops off a whole lot quicker. And also in Florida, I was shooting at a hog at 30 yards, but I accidentally used my 20 yard pin and it completely missed the hog. If I was using lighter arrows, there wouldn't have been that much difference between 20 and 30 yards. But here we go, this is the moment of truth. This is what really matters. Which one kills better? Sounded good. Oh my gosh. It sounded like it hit harder. It sounded like it hit harder. They do hit harder. Which one actually penetrates most? Man, it's looking close. Oh, we have a clear winner. I'll just take a look. So this one's arrow. I'm not sure if they're actually the same, like length, arrow length. But as we're looking up here, we get an extra maybe two inches of arrow penetration just from the heavier one. It's wild. This is what I was expecting. This is what I was thinking is supposed to happen. Scientifically, whatever you want to say it. This is what's supposed to happen. The lighter one will usually penetrate more until it hits something hard and loses energy. Then the bigger one that has more energy to start finishes through. And I'm kind of I'm kind of salty because I didn't get nearly that much penetration on my actual hog. I literally got that much on my hog, which is like four to five inches. Kind of sad. All right. We got two more broadheads. These two are going to be pretty cool. See, here's the thing. Check this out. On this target, which is foam and nothing hard, the light arrow penetrated a whole lot more. It literally penetrated so much more hitting the same amount of foam. But it's always soft, so the lighter ones penetrated more. That's the thing. It's If we just went from the bow target, we thought that the lighter one did better. Now, I can already tell you which one's going to penetrate the best. It's a heavy, thin diameter. Because this one's really thin diameter. That's less friction as it's going through. This one's pretty thick diameter. It's more friction as it goes through. So, according to that, if you want the perfect penetrating arrow, thin diameter, heavy arrow, front weighted, and a big broad head. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> and what we're about to find out right now is if the two blade outperforms a three blade. Because um, there's a chance that this one has a lot harder time getting through that initial hard piece which will be the wood because there's a chance it could wedge in there and lose a lot of energy just trying to make three holes instead of just two then after that we're going to try an expandable one and uh we'll see about that we'll see what just happens i see the expandable breaking there's a good chance but we'll see here we go i'm gonna send this one right in the middle of those two big three blade muzzy not sponsored at all i'm kind of hoping it breaks because we need some action <laughs> we'll see though i don't think it's gonna break but i don't think it's going to penetrate as much as the two blade. I'm going to go a little bit high, right above that first arrow. That was interesting. Now, before we look at it, I do want to say that this one was a three blade with a heavy arrow. And if it's just me, I definitely think that a three blade is more effective because it has an extra blade to cut. But when it goes through something tough, it's which one's actually going to go through further. Let's check it out. Um, We lost about an inch of penetration with the two blade versus the three blade, which isn't very bad at all and when we take a look at the cavity that it built we got a you got about a one inch one inch cavity but on the three blade a much wider and more dynamic type cut because you obviously you know you're cutting more blood you're cutting more vessels that's something to think about right there that's something to think about for an inch less of penetration you're getting an entirely new blade to cut that's something to think about let's do the expandable now with this expandable it is going to be on the light arrow but what we can do is we can just compare it to the other light arrow so basically we're testing expandable broadhead versus fixed two blade broadhead and this is a swacker so they're kind of cool because it has a chance to penetrate in up to here then kind of fold out we'll see how it does i've heard of swackers breaking quite often so i've seen them break here we go sending it that was pretty loud. I don't know what happened. Looking at the back of the arrow, it looks like it penetrated the worst. But um, that's actually, it actually worked pretty good. It actually worked really good. Did it not break? It did not break. And it also, if you look up here at the cavity, the big blades didn't expand until after it already went to the through the hard piece, which is exactly what they're supposed to do. And it even made a whole lot bigger wound channel than anything else. So I'd say straight flesh. That's probably your best bet. But that's the thing. Even though we plan to go straight between a rib, it's hard to do. And I didn't do it on the hog, so there's a good chance you may not either. But also, we lost a lot of penetration. We can't forget that. Even compared to the other light arrow, we lost an inch of penetration. But we also got an extra inch of cutting. That's something to think about. Let's do field tip. Let's do heavy arrow field tip. This is going to be interesting, pulling this out. Oh man, that was rough right there. We'll do heavy arrow 150 grain field tip. We'll see what the penetration does. I don't I have no idea. Here we go. I'm gonna say this one's going deep. I think I think you're right. Oh, that's interesting. That's very interesting. The field tip went the same exact length. 
except maybe a centimeter less than the other heavy arrow with the broadhead. That's some interesting stuff. I guess the sharpened broadhead had an easier time getting through that, which gave it more energy to penetrate. That's just a theory. A film theory. <laughs> and even at the end of the day, none of those would have actually passed through. That's the crazy thing. On a moderate sized, thick animal. But that's also if you hit something like wood. Hey, straight behind the shoulder, maybe in between a rib, or maybe even nicked a rib. I think all these arrows are probably going to pass through. Except maybe the swacker. It'd been, it might have had a hard time coming out. But overall, we're looking pretty good. That's good performance, though. How it waited until it finally opened right here. Which, that's what they're made to do. But what happens whenever it opens on one bone and then hits another one? That's whenever they can break. All right, now that we're done with the actual test, that has that that's literally like game-changing for me. That's decided which arrows I'll probably use for the rest of my life. Pro I will probably go with big heavy ones. <laughs> Daryl, we're trying to make a video. Thank you. Anyways, you get about an extra inch and a half of penetration, but you gotta keep in mind that extra inch and a half, that costs you like 20% speed. And that's a lot. Anyways, we're gonna turn this around to where we have a completely new platform. This thing's never been penetrated at all. And we're gonna do it with nothing. We're just gonna go straight flesh, straight meat, whatever. I don't know. Let's try it. We'll see what happens this time. All right, the first one's light arrow, fixed broadhead. I'm just gonna do all these pretty much right after another. Then we'll go up and check them out. Now we'll go heavy arrow, fixed broadhead, two blade. Now we'll go heavy arrow, three blade. Now we'll go expandable blade swacker on light arrow. All right, let's go check it out. Coming up on it, my predictions, I think it's probably going to be the same as with the armor. Funny thing, looking at the back of the arrows, we'll look at the front. Yeah, looking at the front, the penetration. Dude, literally, the penetration is a... For some of these, it's double without hitting anything hard in the front. And even from the swacker to the heavy broadhead, the light arrow, the muzzy, the difference without hitting anything hard... Whenever it doesn't hit any bones, no fur, anything, the difference, half an inch. Did not expect that. But even at that, the big, heavy, single blade broadhead penetrated the best. I didn't really expect that. I thought that for sure maybe one of the light arrows would go ahead and catch out, but just that piece of plywood, you can see, they were penetrating to about right here. They gained almost double. Some of them did go double. And just looking at this, if you didn't hit anything, the swacker or the three blade muzzy would probably be the best. Cause look in there at that wound channel. I don't know how great y'all can see that, but that's left from the swacker. Two inches wide. For these other ones, kind of just a little bitty one but i mean it penetrated and the thing about the swacker there's a chance it could break on the way in or not even open at all another thing when you are picking broadheads obviously two blades are not going to give as big of a hole as three blades which could make blood trailing a little bit harder but you gain about half an inch of penetration kg may be switching to three blades after this you get a whole extra blade for not much less penetration Okay guys, so we're back in the house right now. We just went out there and proved ourselves that this arrow, which is the heavy one, the cheap one from Amazon, this one penetrates the best. And that's really what I'm going to start hunting with. So now that I know this arrow performs the best, I got a couple more arrows just like them over here that I've not even touched yet. Let me pull them out. We'll go ahead and get them set up. I ordered 12 of these off Amazon for $60. That's $5 each. And now I have eight left. Honestly, I don't even remember what happened to the other four. I don't know. But yeah, right now we're going to build the arrow. I just upped the poundage from 60 pounds up to 65 pounds. That'll give me a little bit more penetration and it's not really that much harder to pull and hold back. We also retuned the rest to where these arrows are tuned again and they are flying straight as an arrow. So here we go. 550 grain arrow. We got to build them up. Okay guys, as you can see, it's a completely different day than it was last time we was down here. I don't know if y'all can see it, tell or not, but we were missing one piece of the puzzle to build arrows, and without those we couldn't do anything. What we were missing are these. These are the inserts. This is what like makes them weigh them down to the correct weight. And if we didn't have these, which we didn't, we basically couldn't do anything. But right here in front of me is all the tools I have to take this arrow from being normal stock arrow, not that awesome, and turning it into one of the ones that I actually hunt with. So first we got sandpaper, then we got a Sharpie, then we got the inserts, then we got the field tips, 150 grain, then we got these super cheap lighted knocks, but listen guys, they'll work. We got some glue, we got a drill bit, we got arrow cutter, and then we got a KG pocket knife. KG pocket knife, it's kind of just there for looks, but if you want one, you can get one at kindlegrade1.com slash shop or first link in the description. But yeah, I'll walk you through step by step how we're building these arrows, and then we're taking them outside 
We're gonna fling some, and hopefully 80 yards. But first, let's build them. First step with the arrow. Measure it to how long you want it to cut. This one right now is 30 inches. I want it to be 28 and like a quarter. So I've already got it pre-measured. We'll pull out our thing. I got this on Amazon for like, I don't know, a few dollars. I'll slide it on over. This is the arrow cutter. Line it up really nice. Twist it, which is cutting the arrow. Tighten it some more. Continue to cut the arrow. There, boom. Right there, the arrow's cut. Now from here, I'm gonna grab the drill bit, kind of just to get some of the shavings off from the inside. Now I'll come over here to the sandpaper, twist it around right there some. That way the, the end can be kind of smooth. Maybe do the edges a little bit, the outside edges. Come in here with my insert. Make sure it fits in real nice. I'll go ahead and grab a 150 grain, pop it in there. That way I can actually pull it back out. Now this is the important part. This glue right here, it dries in like three seconds. So I kind of got to be quick and I'm not a big fan of this glue, but that's what we got, so that's what we're working with. I'm gonna have to make this quick. Does it really dry that quick? Yeah, it really does. It's not a, it's not a good thing. All right, there we go, that's enough, that's enough. All right, gotta get it on. Time is ticking, dude, let's go, let's go. Oh man, it may be too slow. Oh no, 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 no. No, barely, barely, oh no! Where's the paper towel? All right, we somehow made that work. You saw right there, I was pushing down, it kind of locked up, I had to give it all I had. Um, we probably shouldn't do this with the uh, with the field tips. Hey, I'm still learning as we go, I'm still learning. As for those right there, pretty well, they're ready to go. The insert is in, it's cut to the correct length. I'm gonna pull out a Sharpie, I'm gonna number each of these arrows right here on the veins. I'm gonna go ahead and mark this one as a one, and I'll mark these all through six. That way, if one starts flying weird, I can keep track of it. Now that I got that done, I bought these super cheap uh, lighted knocks, but they will work, and these are the same ones I shot the hog with. Roll the clip. They light up good, just as good as any other, in my opinion. So I'll grab some pliers, which I magically already lost. Here we go, some KG pliers, actually. Pull out the old knock. In with the new knock. Make sure it's lined up. Odd feather up. Boom. That arrow is cheap, but extremely effective. Then whenever I'm getting ready to go hunting, I'll pull out a broadhead, set it on, just like that. We're ready to go hunting. Roll the montage of KG building the rest of these arrows, then we're going out and shooting some 3D. Alright guys, we got the bow and everything, but here's the target we're going to be using. Morel targets, they hooked us up. That's it. Big old target. That's a big old target. It's heavy too. Perfect. There we go. What we're going to do, since I have a single pin sight, we need to figure out where it's hitting at 30 yards and where it's hitting at 60 yards. Then we take that sight tape, put it up on it, boom, it figures out the rest. So that's our target. Back up to 30, start shooting. All right, we're staying at 30 yards. I'm just going to sling some, figure out where we're hitting, and we'll go from there. That dropped bad. It looked way low. It's extremely low. It's like two feet low. Let's try this one. That one's way high. Hey, we'll figure it out here in a minute. That one's pretty close. All right, now that we know where I'm hitting at 30, I can come in here and mark this as the 30 yard line. So we'll mark it right there. That's gonna be 30 yards. Now we get to back up to 60, figure out where it is, and then that's how we're gonna decide which sight tape to use. All right, let's go. We're at 60 yards. The wind's messing with me a little bit, but it paused for a second. See all we can do. This is just a blind guess pretty much at where 60 is gonna hit. It hit the target, I don't know where yet. We got a little bit of a breeze every now and again, and it's not so much that it's messing up the arrow, but whenever I'm holding this big old flap thing out in the air and the wind pushes, it's kind of hard to fight against it. It's kind of hard to side in a bow in the wind. That's basically what I'm saying. Kind of excited to see what my groups are at 60. Even though it may not be hitting the dead center, it should still be a, should be a group. If I was a robot, they'd all hit the same spot. 
Let's go check it out. That is not a bad group for six. Hey, hey, stop chewing on my bowstring. Hey, stop chewing on my bowstring. They wasn't even chewing on the strings. They chewing on the metal parts. Real smart, real smart. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go pull these and I'll be right back. Also, we never said this, but we are in the goat pen right now. I figure if I'm gonna shoot my bow, might as well shoot my bow with the goats. I didn't think they'd eat my bow strings. But all right, guys, we're moving in. From what I know, we got a deer. But there he is, there he is. Do you see him? Be careful, Shh, don't move, don't move. You see him? I think he's like a big 10 or big eight. I don't care, I'm taking him. We need to get around this limb right here, then we can take him. You on him? You on him? Yep. Good, we range him. He's 36. Let's go. Stinking killed him, dude. Oh, it's a little far back. Mm. He's gonna die, but it's gonna take him a few hours. Got him right in the liver. Bad shot. Same thing I did to the pig in Florida. It wasn't too bad. What do you think? I mean, I, I'd give it maybe a double lung, maybe a lung liver. Bottom line, he's dying, but not right now. But you know what the good thing is? There's plenty more fish in the sea. Like that one. Dude, he's a big one. Gosh, he's a big one, dude. You see him? I seen him. Did they see him? That's Chad. No, that's, that's Dave. We saw him earlier. How many yards you think he is? Well, comment below how long, how many yards you think this is. He's 34. You on him? Mm hmm. Heart shot. He ain't going 20. That was a good shot. That was a good shot. He's dead. He's dead. Also, this deer was kind of quartering towards me. It's probably a no take in real life. I mean, this is real life, but see what we're doing. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier. We started putting our targets in the goat pen so that they can keep it mowed for us. And we can like, you know, say, hey, what's up? Whenever they were shooting bow, you know, we can talk to them, hang out. And we can use their trails that they made. Now that right there, my friends, is a dead deer. That is a dead foam deer if I've ever seen one in my life. You know, I mean, it says to aim right there. I just said, I don't want to. I said, I want to aim right there. So I hit right there. This bow pretty much dead on right now. If we can get this video, and I know it's a stretch, but it'll be worth it, to 10,000 likes, we're going to turn this entire goat lot, all of this, into the most epic 3D hunting range you have ever seen in your life. It's going to have more of these. It's going to have cooler ones. We'll get a bear. But listen, 10,000 likes, and it's coming spring 2021. We'll see you later, guys. Subscribe if you're not on channel. I need subscribers. Bye.